I do get this question a lot. And it's usually about how to handle mold. This specific person said that they've been sick for years now with mold. They've had many people come out. They don't have any standing water, but they do have some things done in the crawl space, like a sump pump and such, but they're getting mixed advice. They want to know, should they seal the vapor barrier? Do they want to add vents and a humidistat to move the air? Or do they just want to let the crawl space breathe? That's a very common misconception. And honestly, it kind of depends on where they are. So if I'm living in Denver, Colorado, where the average humidity is below 60%, I might decide to have a vented crawl space. But if I'm living in the Appalachia of North Carolina or on the coast or somewhere where humidity is high all the time, then how do they expect their crawl space humidity to be low when the outside humidity is high? So ventilation, keeping the vents open, and I always try to relate it to temperature. It's one of those things where if you wanted to run your AC and keep your house on 72 degrees and it was 80 degrees outside, would opening the windows be a good idea? No. <laughs> no. No, absolutely not. Well, if you want your humidity to be below what the experts say is the mold growth point, which is 60%, and it's higher than 60% outside, would ventilating the crawl space be a good idea. No, of course not. Now, that's where people get confused is there's so much information. For decades, people, pest control companies, builders, even code has said, oh, well, you need to ventilate the crawl space. Well, that worked back when there was an HVAC in the crawl space because let's face it, if I've got hot, humid air coming in and let's say my house has AC ducts in the crawl space and yours doesn't, then my crawl space is going to be more likely if I'm in a hot, humid environment to make even more moisture than yours because you don't have that cold duct work or that dew point flash point that's going on inside the crawl space. So the first thing that anybody needs to do is control moisture. There is no reason to go after the mold. There is no reason to talk about mold removal without first fixing the moisture problem. And when I say moisture, I mean possibly standing water, but more likely humidity. So whatever's causing that humidity. So mm -hmm. in order for them to have a healthy home, sealing the vapor barrier, sure, not a bad idea because it helps slow humidity from coming up from the ground. But honestly, I've put a dehumidifier in a crawl space that had unsealed vapor barrier and still was able to control the humidity. It just ran more. They've been sick with mold for years. They tested, they found out what kind of mold it is. And I actually forgot to add that she says at the end here, my real question is, do we have to fully encapsulate, you know, grade the soil, add drainage channels, install a sealed sump pump, vapor barrier, dehumidifier, or is there a lower budget option that could still work? Well, again, if we're talking about mold, it, the sealing of the, you know, installing a French drain and a sump pump has nothing really to do with mold. That has to do with a flooded crawl space and a foundation problem. Now, I'm not saying that standing water doesn't add to humidity because obviously it does. And those of you that live near a, a lake or a body of water, you understand that, right? Air flows over that body of water, kicks up you know, the moisture, you have high humidity, fog, all that kind of stuff going on. But what you have to do is control humidity. That's why we call, you know, here at Cross Space Ninja, AJ, we call humidity the number one enemy, right? Because it's not something you can see. Uh, you sometimes can feel it, you know, like especially if it's really bad, you know, you walk in and it feels muggy or something like that. But for the most part, if you're living in your house, you get used to that feeling. So your neighbors might walk in and feel it feels muggy, but you probably don't really notice it because you're used to it being muggy. You might not even notice the smell after a while because that musty smell, your, your sensory, what's it called? Sensory olfactory or whatever it's called. I did a video about that, that you just get used to those things, right? So in order, like I said before, in order to address mold and if they said they've been dealing with mold for years so now the mold has gone from the crawl space if that's the source into the living space well now they're dealing with a different problem they've got potentially 
ground zero is the crawl space. And I'm not saying it is or it, is, it isn't because I haven't seen their crawl space. But if their crawl space is humid and there's mold in there, the stack effect is going to take it from their crawl space into their living space. Now, that's a totally different animal that they got to deal with because now we're talking about airborne spores. By the way, if anybody's watching this video, there's a link in the description for a do-it-yourself mold testing kit for air quality. I encourage you to check that out. And there's a lot of other great stuff in the description too. Uh, you can do a consultation with us. I won't go into all that because people tend to, to skip those parts of our videos, but just check out the description is what I'm trying to say. But the point is, is that you've got to figure out, number one, do you have mold? So if you're sick, when you go to the doctor, do they give you a physical and try to find out what's going on? Or do you just like say, hey, I'm not feeling good, and they prescribe you something, right? So it, you got to do the same thing with your house. So what do you do? You get moisture meters, you get indoor air quality samples, and you check the environment. So you go down to the crawl space with a humidity reader and a wood moisture meter and find out if it's wet. That needs to be the first thing you do. Then you get one of our surface test sampling kits off the DIY store, off the supply.crawlspaceninja.com store, and you test the joist or the subfloor and see what kind of mold. You never want to do an air sample in a crawl space because it's not, you know, a conditioned space. So you do a surface test of the mold if there is any in the crawl space. Then you you grab that air sampling test kit that I mentioned that's in the description and you get 10% off of that by the way if you use the link in the description and you test the air. By the way, AJ, what's the number one room that you spend most of your time in in your house? Your bedroom. Yeah, exactly, your bedroom. So, you know, you want to test the air in your bedroom. You want to test the air in your kid's bedroom. You, you don't really care about the air in the garage if all you do is go out there to get in your car and leave, right? I mean, that's not as important as the air in the bedroom or maybe if y'all have a family room that you spend a lot of time in or whatever. So you want to air sample the bedrooms for sure. So check the air in the bedrooms. Check for mold and moisture in the crawl space. And then once you gather that information, you're not guessing anymore. And let's say you had slightly high levels of mold in the house and no mold in the crawl space, but your moisture was high in the crawl space. Well, stick a dehue in there so that way you don't have moisture creating a mold problem in the future. You don't have to worry about addressing mold in the crawl space, but you still need to address the humidity. And then you grab a really good air purifier, like that air purifier we have on the supply store kills mold. Oh, yeah. And maybe that's all you need. Maybe you don't have to do a full mold remediation or hire a mold remediation contractor to come in and do that. So arm yourself with information is what I'm trying to say. I love that there's a way to handle this without having to do a full end cap, but also you have to know what you're fighting. And I think you explained it perfectly. 